All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Massacre series. Credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing the series. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, guys, so exciting news. We get to switch the soundtrack. So if you have a recommendation for me, you can put it down in the comment section below. Basically, it has to be video game music, no lyrics, and it has to be... Uh, you just give me the, the title and uh, the game it's from, and then I can go find it. Don't overwhelm me. Some, some, some of you guys put a lot of different songs. Obviously, I can't include, like... 65 songs per playlist but you know if you could do like two per person i think that would be entirely reasonable but if you've got any song recommendations or music recommendations for the background of these videos put it down in the comment section down below all right guys we are back with another episode here i actually looked at the legendary ocean stuff that we had so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mixed on how to build this deck because there's a lot of different directions we can go. Uh, I don't have a complete deck yet. I just threw all of the cards that could be useful into one kind of pile here. And I think that there are a lot of different ways that we can play it. So we can play a control route with a bunch of normal monsters. That's one way to play it. And then the pacifist card, which is somewhere mixed in here. I don't know where I put it. Actually, I forgot to add it. But yeah, that would be in here too. But the uh, Phantasm Spiral... Um, field spell basically we have that and I can use two copies of that so I was thinking about going the normal route with that on top of that we have all the ten yees which work with normal monsters that's also kind of cool we have two shathanas uh, on top of that we have a bunch of decent water stuff so when we activate gozen sometimes we get locked under gozen but if our entire actually like main deck is water we gozen becomes a significantly better card uh, plus we have stuff like tidal and Kashtira Ogre, stuff like that. We have now this Scion dude. Of course, we've got one of our best cards, Endymion. So we have a lot of waters. Also, we've got this guy right here, uh, which is a normal Pendulum, but it's also a Tuner, which is kind of cool because then we can use... Uh, where is it? We can we can summon like the normal stuff like Transcendosaurus, and we can summon uh, Risen, and we can summon Draco Berserker of the Ten Yi. Like, we can summon a lot of cool stuff, actually. So, there's... Maybe by next episode, I'll have this already. Like I said, if you guys have some, any ideas on this deck, or tell me which direction I should go, I'll, I'll obviously consider it. But I think this deck could be really, really cool. We have a lot of cool normal monster support, a lot of cool water support, Ten Yi support. And, obviously, I'm not going to be playing a 60-card deck with this, because there's no benefit to it. But I think this could be a cool deck to check out for next episode. For our existing deck, we've been doing quite well. Uh, some people have told me to cut Mistake. Honestly, I think this is my third episode playing this card. We have not drawn it yet. I 20 plus duels, we have never opened it. Not going first, not going second. I totally understand why you would want me to cut this card. It's the reason I didn't want to play this card. Uh, because it's really only useful going second. But at the same time, we haven't even opened it yet. So I can't even I can't even honestly say that it's a bad card yet. Because, I mean, I, obviously, we all know the issues with it. But I can't really say it. Like, we haven't opened it. It's kind of crazy after 20 duels not to see it once. Uh, this is another card. I don't know if there's something in, like, the the algorithm of, of the, like, the drawing of, like, Master Duel. I don't know what it is. But, like, Lost Wind and Mistake, we almost never see. It's, like, the oddest thing in the world. We've probably played 40-something duels since I've pulled this, probably more, and I've maybe seen it twice, maybe, uh, which is kind of crazy. This card I've never seen, like I said, 20-plus duels, it, it, it's really odd, I couldn't tell you what the reasoning is behind that. Also, 
And we got to add some new stuff to our deck. We pulled the Tenyi Berserker guy, which is also interesting. Uh, I realize that now that we have a, a reason to play the Cyframe package because we have the Tenyi Berserker. I guess the issue with Tenyi Berserker is I don't know what to replace. I don't want to replace Dragite, and I don't want to replace Magistus uh, Zorora because it gives me an extra card for for um, Endymion. So as of right now, I don't even know if we can really play, especially with the fact that I only really have one tuner. So to play four Synchro Monsters for one tuner would be kind of idiotic. Um, if especially if I cut something more important. Yeah, so for now, I don't think I'm going to be playing uh, Draco Berserker of the Tenyi in the in the main deck. I, I just don't think it makes sense to cut any of these cards. Actually, you can make the argument that we could cut the Zeta. Again, Zeta is reliant on us drawing Ash Blossom. So, I mean, I, I guess this would be slightly better because it can end game. So I'll take out Zeta for now. Uh, I just think, just because Ash is not searchable, whereas... Zorora is actually searchable and there's a chance that we get it. This isn't a tuner, is it? No. So we only legitimately have one tuner in the deck. So I, I actually think we do have some interesting stuff. The other deck that I'm kind of working on in the background, I didn't put it together because unfortunately we have 25 slots and we have 25 decks. So I, I have to delete some of these other decks that we've got here in order to start, you know, like producing new decks here. But I have to make a Chaos deck, possibly a 60-card Chaos deck. I think that would be interesting with the Cyframe package, stuff like Visa, Visa Starfrost, like a bunch of stuff that we have, Ring, Ringo Worm. Actually, this could go in the Normal Monster deck, too, I just realized. Like I said, the Normal Monster deck is really the kind of, like, Legendary Ocean Pacifist deck. I think it could be a really good deck. We could do, like, a Floodgate version, or we could do, like, a just a water deck version. There's a lot of different routes we can go with that, but I think a Salt Synchron is another one that's really, really good in that deck, uh, for sure. So, we got we to kind of test it out. Uh, we're playing with this. Uh, let's save it and go to get some duels done. All right, so we start the duel with a coin flip loss. Again, the coin flip losses have been absolutely unprecedented. I don't know how I keep losing so many coin flips. He's playing Mayakashi. We have Bestial Magnemite, which might help. I forget the attribute of the main Mayakashi girl. If Depending on her attribute, nope, she's a fire, so it might not happen. The only one we can really banish is this guy, and maybe one of these. But the, the main card you want to banish is the main Mayakashi, which is the Daki. If I had a... Yeah, even the Mizuki, banishing Mizuki is pointless. We'll see what he what he gets into. Maybe if he has more of a Zombie World-ish package, I can banish the Doom King Baller Drock using Bestial Magnemut. Maybe that will help. So, End Phase. Okay, End Phase is great. End Phase is great. He did all that to do nothing, essentially. So, I'm happy with that Barrier Statue. Depending on what he's got, this doesn't actually matter. If Yeah, it depends on what he's got. But, I think we can Special Summon this and then Normal Summon Barrier Statue. I think that's probably best. So we do that. Summon this out. Right here. And then we normal summon out the barrier statue. And uh, there's no point to equip Moon Mirror Shell. Just in case he's got an evenly matched or something. We'll play around. We'll play around the evenly matched on the off chance that he's got one. Because I don't want to have to banish a Moon Mirror Shield for no reason. Uh, it's... Oh my god. Bro, I'm psychic. <laughs> And that's why, by the way, that is why, and I tell a lot of you guys, that's why you don't set cards and then go to battle phase. On the off chance that they have something like that, that's exactly why I always tell people not to do that. It's like the true sign of a noob. Anytime you see somebody like main phase one, they just start setting things in the back row, that's why you don't do that. Wow, that was incredible. That was like a, like a lesson that I didn't have to learn. Maybe you guys learned, because I didn't have to learn that. That was incredibly psychic. This guy didn't expect the duel against against Ishizu today. Fuck. <laughs> well, that happens. Yeah, that happens every episode. There's no, there's not even a point to predict that. Do we put that on the top? Yeah, we put that on the top because if the, if if he survives this, then we just re-equip that and then just do this all over again. If this doesn't survive, then we. Oof, that's good. Good thing we did that. Yeah, I don't even have to. Playing around Harpy's Feather Ruster is like playing around the passing of time. It's like it's going to happen no matter what. We get Harpy's Feather Duster every episode. I don't even get mad anymore. Maybe even a little... I get a little happy to see Harpy's Feather Duster. It means the world is going on as it's supposed to. So, all right. We'll just re-equip this onto our barrier statue. And now at least the great thing about getting Harpy's Feather Duster is you know it's limited to one. So it won't happen again. And uh, now the only issue is they've now got... 
heavy storm, which can be concerning. But we'll see if he's got it. We'll, we'll see if he's got the heavy storm. I'm not going to set Eternal Galaxy. There's no purpose for that whatsoever. It's a good thing I didn't set it because it would have gotten Harpy's Feather Dustered. It, it would have been it would have been gone right now. But yeah, it's phenomenal. No, that was great. That was great. The predictions back to back. The Harpy's Feather Duster. That was an incredible moment. Uh oh, the connection's counting down. Look at this. Anytime you see the connection, it's either. Maybe they, they're rage quitting, hopefully. I don't know. I would think they're rage quitting. Now, the other thing is they could have Sharanui's in the deck. And Sharanui's are obviously fire, which I hope he has Sharanui's in the deck. Because usually it's Sharanui Mayakashi. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It, it always hurts to beat people who have a fun deck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it really actually does. I don't like to beat people who are trying to play. If I did that against Ubel, I wouldn't even show... Any mercy whatsoever, I'd have a smile on my face. But sometimes when somebody's trying to play a fun deck and you do something like that to them, it really actually does feel bad, to be honest. All right, this is what our opponent was playing. Again, they lo it looks like a fun deck, so they're playing... They're not even playing the FTK. They're just straight up playing Mayakashi. It's not... Oh, yeah, they are playing the FTK. Man, screw this guy. I don't care. I'm not unhappy. I'm not unhappy because he is playing the FTK. So basically, if you've never played against this, you summon Soul Absorbing Tower. Uh, every time a zombie monster is special summoned... You basically send two off your opponent's deck. So essentially what they do is they base this card summons itself back every single time that you synchro summon. So it's basically in not infinite, but you summon her from the graveyard a bunch of times. Basically you synchro summon, you summon her back, and you just climb every time from two to five to seven to nine to eleven, and then you just basically climb all the way. And uh, it's just a, a ton of summons. It mills our deck every single time, and they essentially win like that. But yeah, I, I think we would have lost, depending on... Because because Bistial Magnemite, unless... Actually, I think that they get this card into the graveyard first, and then they Mizuki it back to the field. So, ideally, what would happen is they would mill this to the graveyard, and then we would uh, we would Bistial Magnemite this card. And if we Bistial Magnemite this card, then we win, uh, essentially, because their win condition is this exactly. Especially with this extremely pure version of the deck. I don't think he's beating us, because then he's just got his... What does he do? He summons this boss monster, maybe? He summons her, which she's okay. We actually have her, but yeah, I, I think we we would have won that no matter what. Alright, we're above Platinum 4, so we're in Platinum 4, so we get to open two packs, and so you are to open to start, which is really cool. I'm excited. I'm always excited to open packs. Let's see what we get out of this one. We've got Fusion Sage. Can't really use that. Blackwing card. It's special summon if you have a Blackwing. This card's not terrible. It's actually one of the better Blackwing cards, honestly. Like generic ones. I can't believe this rarity so low, actually. This is one of those cards that it, it's been... This card's been a bit power corrupt in terms of use within Blackwing. Because it does special summon itself. But the problem is... Which is good. And its stats are really good. And its level is really good, but the problem is they've released new black wings that special summon themselves, and they search, and they do all types of other stuff, like send things from the deck, so they've kind of been power crept at this point. Like, this card's been power crept, so it's not really that good anymore. We already have this, we already have this, no point to even comment. Wicked Eraser, we already have. UA, Turnover Tactics, Flower, this was a UR pack, what's going on here? Let's see what this is. Fossil Dig, that's actually really good, because we have Megalo Smasher. For the pacifist deck. So that's now searchable, which is really cool. But outside of the pacifist deck, we actually do have a really good dinosaur engine. We have Ovi Raptor. We have... We'll just look at the dinosaur stuff after this. Uh, but we have a lot of good dinosaur stuff, actually. So definitely that deck building part of the show, we get to... We get to... Since you guys said you want to see it. And I, you know, I agree. I like it. But we get to now check things out between these... Between these pulls. Yeah, it's really cool. We get to check out... What dinosaur stuff we've got, but we definitely have a lot. Gold Pride, Rollerballer, Nulmeria card, Clarent, Photon Change, can't use that. Final Battle's a really good card. Man, this is actually a really good card. Funny enough, we actually do have a very small Subterra package, like extremely small. We have, I think, her? No, we don't have her. We have Guru, one copy, and then we have a Royal Rare, I think, of Behemoth. 
Yeah, I think we have a Royal Rare of Behemoth, and now we have this. We don't have... The problem with this is you need everything, right? You need Hidden City, you need one Archer, you need a Hidden City, you need, a, you need three Gurus, you need three Battles. Like, you need a lot of stuff. This is actually a deck we could definitely get away with using, but you need Hidden City. Uh, this is one of those things you just you absolutely need to get. This is actually low rarity, all things considered. I didn't I didn't know that was a super rare. I thought it was going to be an ultra rare. Uh, we already have three or more of this. Exchange of Night and Day and XYZ Encore. Unless you're playing against... I mean, unless you're playing against Pearly, this this card. Or, or yeah, it's basically Pearly. I don't think I ever need that card. Second pack wasn't that great, but the first one was good. Okay, so this is the dinosaur stuff that we have. Uh, we have Ultimate Conductor. We have one OV Raptor. Quatlas, we have uh, that doesn't really matter. Let's see, we have this guy, which this guy's actually not bad because he adds a bonding card. And if you, if this card is normal or special summoned, target a hydro get on your graveyard special summon. I don't know how you would summon it. It's level five, it doesn't special summon itself. So maybe there's some way I don't know. We've got two Megalo Smashers, Mighty Dino King Rex. It's a level six or lower, so you got to kind of be careful. We have Petite Pterodon. Trying to see what else. Hammerhead's not bad either because he's kind of a free bounce. Gives us access to this fur hire package. We do have the fur hire ultra rare too, so you got to keep that in mind. I don't think we can summon Transcendosaurus. Uh, Jurak, we can. Transcendosaurus, we can't. We can. I mean, it doesn't matter anyway, but we can search Frostosaurus. Sabersaurus. Little D, we can search him too. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely some interesting stuff. And then if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, we have one of the pills. Let me go to related cards with him. Yeah, we have the pill. We have double evolution pill, and we have beta. I don't know if we can... Beta male evolution pill. I don't know if I'm going to be using that, but double of... Actually, let me not be ignorant. I've never actually read this one. I'm going to go ahead and read and see if it's good. Okay, good thing I wasn't being ignorant. This card's actually pretty good. The only thing that's kind of off about it is that it searches a monster that is... No, it doesn't search. It summons a monster using cards in your hand. But then it lets you special summon from your deck, which is cool. But it, you have this tribute from your hand and field. Whereas the double evolution pill lets you banish from graveyard. Which is probably a little bit better. This card's actually not bad either. Maybe this is what we use in that pacifist deck. Like, that pacifist deck it can go in so many different directions. It's actually kind of crazy how many different directions a pacifist deck can go. Uh, I can... Do an entire dinosaur package in that pacifist deck because if i play multiple megalo smashers and then the other like kind of like level four dinosaurs and then i throw in a double evolution pill and maybe like soul eating the overtex i can play in there i can play ultimate conductor because i have multiple dinosaurs they're all level four and then i have the pacifist stuff maybe a few different dinosaurs in here that i'm not seeing maybe like a petite pterodon although i really don't have a way to destroy this like prompt this card's destruction uh, but I think that could be interesting. Like, yeah, if I use, like, Megalo Smasher and then I use Saber Source, which I have one copy of, I think it could definitely be a little bit interesting for sure. And then I, it can summon, actually, extra deck stuff, too. So I could potentially summon Transcendosaurus, or I can summon this Transcendosaurus, too, but it won't have material. So while it has no material, if it battles any damage inflicted to your opponent, it's doubled. So it's actually better if it has no material. That's incredible. And it's 3,000. You attack direct 6,000 damage. That's really not bad. And uh, it has a detach effect, but I don't think we're ever going to be able to... So if this card's destroyed, shuffle the normal monster your graveyard, special summon it. Is that... I, I can't... I can't... I don't think I can use that second effect if it was summoned off double off of double evolution pill because it wasn't properly summoned. But, yeah, I think that is definitely another interesting thing. I think this pacifist dinosaur normal monster deck might be happening. I was, I was hoping to head in a water direction, but... Now that I'm seeing all of this, and it's kind of like coming together uh, with this with this fossil dig, yeah, it, it seems like a pretty good fit. Okay, we've unfortunately lost another coin flip. I swear to you, I don't know how this happens. It Literally, we lose every coin flip. We are more likely to draw Eternal Galaxy than we are to win a coin flip. It's actually kind of crazy. We're playing against Runic, which this actually, this actually really sucks because I have one of the worst runic matchups. I know most people have a runic, like a bad runic matchup, so for me to complain about it is a little, you know, it's a little pointless. But like runic is a really, really, really terrible matchup for us. He discarded the card destruction. He's playing a 50 plus card deck too. He's playing more than a 50 card deck, so he's got 
four cards out here, seven, 49, 56 card deck. He didn't end on a anything that's really that great, to be honest. Barrier statue doesn't do anything at all right now, I don't think, against Runic. I mean, I guess we attack over this. I don't know what this is. I think the Runic cards destroy a special summoned monster, if I'm not mistaken, right? Am I, am I, am I... Am I messed up in the head for saying that? I think they destroy... I don't know why I'm debating myself when I can just go look, right? Runic Destruction. Targets a spell trap card, destroy it. Target an effect monster, negate its effects, okay. Next time it'll be destroyed, it's not. Which one Which one destroys a card? Runic Tip, Runic Flashing Fire, target a special summon monster, destroy it. Manage top two cards. So I'm not going to put spawn trap cards into play. I think I just summon out the barrier statue. I, I know usually you want to summon this first, but I'm not going to. Like I said, I don't want to special summon a monster. The thing with Runic is, shockingly enough, you want to do as little as possible. This guy's going to max it. Yeah, you want to do as little as possible against Runic. Goes in again. I, I, I'm my goal is to do as little as possible. So again, it's a good thing I did not use Scion because I'd be locked into waters right now. Uh, my goal is to do as little as humanly possible against them. So I'm just gonna go straight to the battle phase. I don't even know if I want to set spawn trap cards because his monsters are so low in level that I think it'd be dumb to set spawn trap cards. Plus, it, it, it allows his runic cards to activate, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and end phase. I'm gonna torment this runic player. Uh, he, he, his plan was to torment me. I'm going to torment him. Uh, this goes in match is definitely not great to see on the field. I don't know if they play how many main deck monsters they play. A lot of these runic decks don't play any main deck monsters. He might have Fossil Dina. He might have nothing. So we'll see. Uh, he's going to activate Freezing Target and Effect Monster. And then he's going to Mill. And then he's going to be able to activate Runic Fountain to shuffle back. Necro Valley would be absolutely great right now. But then I guess he would have, uh, yeah, Necro Valley would have been insane right now. I literally would have won the duel if I had Necro Valley. I would have won the duel. So this is negated. Yeah, I think we just go to battle phase here. Is that permanently negated or is it negated temporarily? No, it's not uh, negated. I want to obviously summon something better, but I think it's just be smarter just attack directly, honestly. Just continuously attack this guy directly. Summon limit, again, I... I I'm not going to summon more than what I have on the field. He's he's preventing me from summoning, and he's activating summon limit. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, unfortunately, we have to pierce seven more attacks through unless I draw a fire monster. And the only fire monsters I've got are an Ari Fire, another Barrier Statue, Zorora. I think we need to draw one of those. No, that is not a fire monster. Again, at the end phase, I'm probably just going to discard. I'm not even going to put in anything into play. You know, straight to the battle phase, attack directly, and end phase, I uh, will discard. Not that it matters, but I think I'll just discard the lost win because it can come back. And that's it. Yeah, I think that's probably best. I don't want to discard Eternal Galaxy just in case I need to use it, but I probably won't be able to use it with what's on the field anyway. Like I said, I'm just going to keep end phasing here until, yeah, I'm going to keep attacking him with my singular monsters. If I can draw fire... That would be awesome. Dimensional Fissure does nothing against this matchup, honestly. Like I said, it'll just give him a Spell Trap card to pop. And it'll put us in a worse situation. I think we just end phase. Honestly, I don't see myself using this Eternal Galaxy. Actually, I could discard the Gozen match. There's no point to activate it. He has his own Gozen match. So, there was no point there. Alright, he's going to go to the end phase. Perfect. Like I said, my goal here is to... I love how his deck prevents me from special summoning, and I don't summon anything so that he can't... Like, I don't summon anything, meaning he doesn't get to play, because I don't do anything. It's it's like the oddest situation. He's preventing me from playing, which is in turn preventing him from playing. I'm just going to discard goes in match, because obviously he's on the field already. So I have four more attacks. If I can get four more attacks through, we can make things happen here. Like I said, if we can possibly draw another level 4, just normal summon, then we can speed up this process. Uh, that would be very helpful right now. That is not helpful. I'm just going to go straight to battle phase again. No point to even do anything else. We'll go to the end phase. Uh, actually, I actually am curious about a ruling. I don't know what happens when you discard a pendulum. Does it go to great? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, and we're learning little rulings here and there. I, I already knew. I actually should have already known that ruling anyway. That it goes to. It doesn't get sent to the pendulum. Because anytime this gets discarded or cost or something like that, that's what happens. 
He's going to pot of prosperity, which is kind of a dream pull for us. I don't think we're ever going to pull. I mean, this is the weird thing about this challenge. You literally don't know what you're going to pull ever. You're just kind of like sitting here like he banished three. My boy, banish six. You got to win the duel. This is it. This is this is game time. How are you banishing three? Pot is, you can't even activate it. You can't even activate it. This is a game time decision. You got to banish six. This is do or die. I guess he has to discard now. And he's going to discard Dispelling. Zorora. That's awesome, actually. That's really awesome. I think we can actually win now that we summon Zorora. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to activate the effect. I hope this doesn't trigger anything idiotic, but I'm going to activate the effect. I'm going to equip Iowas. And no, I don't want to activate the effect. Even if I could, I don't want to activate the effect. So now we're just going to attack directly. And I think if this gets through here, we actually won the duel, hopefully. It did. So that's how you beat Runic. Don't do anything. That's great. Yeah, Runic is one of those weird decks like Phantasm Swirls where if you literally don't do anything, you just normal summon an attack, you win. Now, let's make this very clear. If I didn't have the barrier statue, I definitely wouldn't have won that duel. That barrier statue won me that duel. Because the second I put that barrier statue into play, he couldn't summon monsters from his extra deck and he couldn't defend his life points. So that's really the reason why I won that duel. And we just ranked up. We're... What's crazy is we literally have been losing coin flips non-stop and we're managing to win, which is good news. It's not bad news. You would think it's bad news. We're losing coin flips. No, we're losing coin flips and we're still winning. That's good news. And we're beating decks that really aren't that bad, if we're going to be totally honest here. So we just ranked up, got some free gems. Let's check out his deck real quick. All right, this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing a 55 card uh, deck. They easily could have had stuff that outed us, honestly. They had Amato Awato. Inspector Border, they could have drawn. So they, but if I had to guess, what they, the problem with their deck beating us is that they had two normal summons. That would have outed us. They also have Raigeki. They couldn't activate Lightning Storm even if they drew it. Uh, their best bet would be to draw like Dark Ruler or something of that sort. Probably Dark Ruler. See, they could have actually super polyed us if they had it set. We would have been just cooked at the end there. Uh, actually, no, they wouldn't have because you can't super poly into Garura under Barrier Statue. But... Yeah, they could have cooked us there. They they had not that, you know, they barely drew any floodgates. I actually don't really see the purpose of grass in this deck. I don't know why this card, I don't know why this deck is 55 cards. I, I actually don't. Like, what are you milling? Like, runic spells? And I guess you just put them back into the deck and uh, runic fountain? I, I I guess that's the idea here. I mean, here, here's, uh, there's probably a card that adds back from graveyard, right? Yeah, so what if you mill the runic field spell? Like, what happens to you? Is there a way to get it back? Because this adds from deck to hand. This adds a continuous from deck to hand. Does this recover or something? I don't think this recovers. No. So how do you... Is, is runic tip... Runic tip gets from the deck, right? Yeah. From deck to hand. So what happens when you mill runic fountain? Like, do you just lose? <laughs> is the duel just over? I don't know. It's his win condition. Yeah, a lot of one-ofs, a lot of blowout cards here. All right, time to open some packs. Very exciting. Probably the best. Probably the best part. I don't even know what the best part is. Let me know what you guys, what your favorite part of the show is. Is it the dueling, the pack opening, or the deck building? The scheming. Uh, Christron, oh, just in time, there's going to be some new support soon. I don't think this is the one we can use. There is a Christron card that we can use. It is this one. Number one, it's a level four, which is quite nice. But it also has a second effect where you can banish from the graveyard, summon a Christron token. Um, that's pretty good. I mean, that's definitely usable for certain things. We have like Link Aribo and stuff. It could be used for Link Climbing. That card could be good. Guard Mantis is okay. I, we already have one. We could definitely use it. Full Armored Exceed. It's actually cool. This lets you Exceed Summon on your opponent's turn. And uh, if we had the full package, this would be really, really good. I don't know what of, we, of this package that we actually have. This stuff's good. We need this stuff. But I don't think that we have either of these right now. Plus, we don't have the spell card. But potentially, this could be good. Uh, should all card go strike Shino bird can't don't have enough orbital hydrolander. We have two copies now of this card. That's pretty good. You would want to play two copies actually. So that 60 card chaos deck is looking better and better now every single time. And then a Nilmeria card, which is also a decent card. Yeah, I, I have to delete some of the old decks that we've got because we're in a new season anyway. That way I can build some new decks that are just exciting kind of like a 60 card i think 60 card chaos would be really fun to play uh we'll see though all right here's our second pack 
Let's see if this one's if this one's any good. That last one, like I said, every pack has something that could be usable in the future. Okay, Orcus. This is the tuner, uh, which is cool. This is the one Orcus tuner. That's not bad. We don't have a ton of Orcus card, but that's not bad. Uh, this is not the Dino Rustler you want to pull. Ancient Gear Hunting Count. We do, Ancient Gears are brand new. We've got another copy of this. That's not terrible. It's good for the Chaos deck. A War Rock. Another War Rock card. But I don't think this one's really usable. So we have the only one that... We have Gatos, which is decent. But we don't have any of the... Like... Yeah, this guy. Mahmood. We don't have this guy. We don't have this guy. This has an odd amount. Like two URs in a deck that... This should be like Sioux Ships. Like everything is, is rare and common or SR. Uh, Wandering Wind, okay, can't really use that, and a Melodious card. Yeah, so these two packs weren't the best, but there are definitely usable cards out of out of both of these packs. All right, exciting news. I won a coin flip, uh, which is crazy, because we have not won a coin flip in, like, a very, very long time. Our hand is okay. It's susceptible, definitely, to Harpy's Feather Dusters and other cards of that sort also we have no monster presence whatsoever other than this potential crackdown but we'll see we'll set everything because again i can't i can't afford to play around harpy's feather duster i will literally lose the duel if i play around it and like let's say i don't set this card and i keep it and we just set this stuff we get harpy's feather duster we lose regardless so because uh, I will not have a follow-up. My follow-up will be a for one forbidden chalice the next turn that's not enough to win so unfortunately i kind of have to put everything onto the board otherwise i lose but we shall see like i said i didn't draw any access to a monster of any kind it would have been nice to get an endymion in this situation you're usually pretty good for this exact situation where you just at least get you get the draw you get the search you get follow-up you get everything he's going to activate the illusion to either fusion summon or okay this is fine with me so he's going to fusion summon or ritual summon. i think he said he's going to fusion summon so he's going to use out of hand it's a crazy top deck. You to pull both, I guess it needs to be like a Dark Magician and something else. Damn, Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl hit the field. Um, we'll see what I do here. I could crack down this. Yeah, I could crack down this. Once per turn, if a small trap card is activated, you can draw a card. Yeah, I'll see if he goes to battle phase and then I'll do it. But I can actually crack down this and then I can Durham Adol this card and then I can use it for my own nefarious purposes. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, I guess we let him. He's going to add a ritual card. We know what it is. It's going to be the Illusion Chaos dude. And then he's going to activate this, which is fine. I couldn't have really prevent it. Actually, I could have prevented that. Yeah, I could have prevented I guess I could have cracked down this monster and then he wouldn't have been able to do that. But it's all right. He's going he's gonna to draw here. I'm not going to Forbidden Chalice it. I think it'd be a waste. He's going to set a card. And he's going to activate Branded Regain. That's actually really good for him, honestly. Because Dimensional Fissure makes it so he basically draws every single turn. That's actually, like I said, really, really good for him. He's going to activate Illusion. That's fine. Illusion of Chaos. Yeah, I definitely could have played around the Dark Magicians a little bit better. If I had just activated Crackdown right away... Because uh, this activates in the following chain, not in the existing chain. It's going to activate, he's going to add a rod. And then put something back. I actually think the rod we forbid in Chalice. I think that is probably the smartest thing to do. We Yeah, we forbid in Chalice this rod. Um, I don't want to destroy this. I want to keep it on field because I want to use it if I can. So we're going to activate rod to negate this. Even though I don't think that he plays a second Dark Magician girl. But these people are insane and unhinged. So, sometimes they actually will play a second, third Dark Magician Girl. I know it's insane, but they actually do. Uh, let me put Chaining on before something bad happens. Damn it! Alright, uh... Okay, let's get the Chaining right. We're gonna activate Crackdown here. To take the Dark Magicians to our side of the field. Hopefully he doesn't have anything uh, he doesn't seem to. We take the Dark Magicians, the attack does not go through, and then we... I guess we just wrap it up here. If he has some sort of targeting thing, we can activate Duramadol. Okay, uh, end phase. Do we do this now? It's not like it matters whether I do this now or later. I mean, I'll do it now, not that it matters. So I'll, I'll just Durama both of these cards. That way, if I activate a spell next turn, I can do something with it. Ash Blossom, a little late, but that's not, that's not terrible. Cool, so we'll go flip this. And we don't want a Torrential, but we'll activate, we'll just attack directly. 
or attack his monster. Now we can attack, which is really cool. So in case, for those of you that don't know the ruling behind that, and this doesn't activate because it's the damage stuff. Uh, for those of you that don't know the ruling behind this, the Dark Magicians I took with Crackdown, which makes it so I can't attack and its effects can't be activated. But since I booked it and flipped the face up, it's now considered a brand new monster so I can use all of its effects. I can use the draw effect. If I had Dark Magician, I could flow in, float into it. But more importantly, I can use the draw effect. Uh, he's going to activate this. Honestly, I think Ash Blossom is a really smart card to activate here. It prevents him from doing this and getting to another copy of Rod, which is pretty cool. Rod is a really useful card for him right now. We'll keep that in hand. We know he's got that in hand. I don't know what else he's got. If he activates spells and trap cards, we actually get the benefit. He's going to go to battle phase. He doesn't have evenly matched. And even if he did, he's got branded regained on field, so it would be pointless. Uh, okay, awesome. We drew Endymion. Endymion is really cool here. So we're going to summon Endymion. Uh, we do not want to activate that. We'll activate Endymion. Actually, funny enough, I think it goes into the back row as... A continuous spell right i think target one yeah it becomes a continuous spell so i think it might actually trigger the effect of the dark magicians but i'll see i uh, will equip it yep we'll equip it with artemis because i i really care about drawing more than i or i care about the advantage more than i care about using just gaining a little bit of attack so then we'll go zorora I think I can activate Dark Magicians here because, yeah, I can because it's a continuous spell. Wow, this is amazing synergy. Oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, do we want to set it? Not particularly, no reason to. And then, yeah, why not? Let's let's do this. Uh, we'll activate and then we'll pop this. And we'll draw a card. Tiamaton. It's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, do I really need Tiamaton? Honestly, I don't need Moon Mirror Shield. I have the more powerful monster here. I think Tiamaton is actually better in this situation because next turn I can use this column to summon a Tiamaton. So I think I'll just put that back. And uh, I think that's pretty cool, honestly. So now I think we just go to battle phase. We go to battle phase. He does have some stuff, obviously, that he can do. We'll attack directly. He probably has Karibo. No, Bistio, Druus Worm. Okay, that I did not expect. And uh, that sucks for us, actually, because he's going to be able to summon Druus Worm. And he's going to be able to... Do some other stuff. Yeah, he's gonna do this because I he banished the light, which is kind of annoying. But he gets it. He shuffles that back, which is cool for us. Oh, look at that! He actually summoned this to this column, and I can pop this card. I can pop this card, but mm, if I pop it, I lose torrential tribute. I pop this to lose torrential tribute. This card, if it's sent to gr from field to graveyard, he can get rid of my special summon monsters. But yeah, I think that's actually worth it. I don't know about, is it worth it to get rid of my Torrential Tribute? I think we have him under a pretty good lock. I think it's worth actually getting rid of the Torrential Tribute. Honestly, I think I'm going to go with it. It's probably not actually a bad idea. I don't think Torrential Tribute is really that great of a card in Dark Magician. Now it's going to destroy in the following chain. So it doesn't really matter. But yeah, like I said, I, I, the, I don't think that Torrential is really that phenomenal in, a, in the Dark Magician matchup anyway. So we're going to activate and we're going to pop this column and uh, continue replay attack. Yeah, I have no choice. I have to replay into this. Again, it gets banished, so it does not trigger the effect. And then we attack directly with these. And then main phase two, this is the awesome part. Main phase two, we can actually go into something else. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go into Galaxy Photon now. Hopefully he doesn't have an Ash Blossom. We'll go Galaxy Photon. And now we get the monster negate for the ritual monster that he's got. So we'll activate the galaxy photon. Detaching this actually. And since it's detaching, it goes to graveyard. So next turn we can use it to summon Zorora, uh, to use Zorora to bring it back. And then we will search out the eternal galaxy to hand. Yes. And now we set this and we pass. And it's a good thing we didn't detach this because we do know he's playing Bistials. And now we just put Chaining on before something bad happens. And we get into a monster as quick as possible. Our negate as quick as possible. And then we'll be able to stop his Dark Magician Ritual Monster. So we'll activate Galaxy. Level this thing up. Into Photon Lord. And that's pretty cool. We've had things pretty well under control. Oh, I can activate this. Oh, I guess yes, I will. And if it's a Spell Trap card... If it's a 
if it's a trap card, I can set it this i can activate it this turn so it's a quick play or a spell or a trap card yes that's awesome yes i will set it to the field and i can activate it this turn and that's it that is really awesome actually wow you know i wish we summoned dark Mag the dark magicians a lot more often it, it seems to really work with our deck lightning storm okay you don't want to see that uh let's see what he's got uh spell trap cards spell trap cards I can't really do anything about that, can I? Yeah, I, I don't think I can really do anything about that. So this will get destroyed, but it's no longer connected to this monster. This will get destroyed, and this gets destroyed. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's the reality. Uh, so those get destroyed. Like I said, it's no longer connected, so he doesn't get the Dark Magicians back. And I still have my monster in a gate. He's going to activate this. I do not want him to have access to that, so I will be activating this uh, to negate the effect. Yes. Uh, I kind of want to destroy it because it is annoying him having that in the hand. Uh, is it a photon or galaxy? You can detach one material. If it's a galaxy, destroy it. And if it has a photon as material, it can't be destroyed by card effects. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and... Because I can always chain it to put a photon underneath it to protect it later. So I'm just going to detach the galaxy photon dragon. That way this gets destroyed and I have I can stop dealing with... Uh, this annoying chaos guy because he it's it's basically a free like search every single turn for him So I want to get rid of it so I don't have to deal with it anymore So I negate it destroy it and he's got two cards to play with and yeah, there's nothing you could do We had that duel absolutely under control. I really wish we could summon the dark magicians more often That card was really really useful for us card is really awesome. Honestly, uh, we've got a lot of legacy tickets cool All right, this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing a dark magician deck with a dark magician girl i mean this honestly we've played against a lot of bricky and terrible dark magician decks honestly this one isn't even really all that bad like the only thing i could say is there's just a ton of one ofs but honestly playing a bunch of different one ofs guarantees that you won't run into uh, like hard ones per turns that overlap so at least that i guess is kind of a positive the weird thing i'd say here is that they've only got one salvation well, Salvation at 1 is fine. That's supposed to be at 1. But they've only got 1 Eternal Soul. And they've got 1 copy of Circle. Which I guess in modern builds you could get away with. Uh, also, this guy got kind of lucky when he opened the Secrets of Dark Magic. Plus Dark Magician. Plus um, um, Dark Magician Girl. It was a pretty crazy opening. But overall, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the results here. Alright, let's open up two, two beautiful Master Packs for ourselves. Like I said, hopefully we get... We just continue to get great cards, honestly. More stuff to, to play with. A rank up card, Soul of Fire, Flameville Commando, Vylon Delta, we already have, Ancient Gear Reborn, World Legacy Sorrow. And no, this is the second one in this episode. And Champion's Vigilance, I forgot I had this. This is, works actually with the token that is summoned off of off of Phantasm Spiral, the Field Spell. But again, we don't have a ton of reliable ways to get to the Field Spell, so playing this would be a little bit bricky. But that's not bad at all. Uh, decent stuff, I'd say. Let's try to get another pack and see what we get out of the second one. Hopefully, again, it's something something cool that we can use on our journey. Mars, okay. Flameville Magician, another Flameville card, uh, a Klee card, I, I don't think I can possibly really use this. When a monster is normal or flip summon, it's a level 4 or lower monster negate its effects. That's actually not terrible. If a monster is special summoned and it's level 5 or higher, negate its effects until the end of the turn, banish it when it leaves the field. Honestly, this card's just kind of like a floodgate. It really actually is, it's just a straight up floodgate. It, it actually, it's not even really Klee. Oh, if you ha if there's no Klee card on the field, send this card to the grave. So never mind, we can't use this. But yeah, it was kind of a floodgate while I was reading. Another Chris the Dawn. Chris, Chris the Crack of Dawn. Another one. That's kind of insane. Uh, Double Dragon Descend. I've never... What does this do? Okay, this relies on our opponent having an XZ Dragon. XYZ Monster, which... I mean, unfortunately, I don't think I can force my opponent to have an XE Dragon or an XE Monster. Alien Warrior, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. Decent stats, but we're not playing Aliens. Let's see what this is. Gem Knight Monsters are okay, but I need a lot more Gem Knights to actually have them be playable. 
All right, let's open up some legacy packs here. I'm just gonna wait till we have like a few, and then I'll I'll start opening them after every win. It's easier that way. That way, if I want to get off, I can just get off without having to worry. Uh, this card, okay, that sucks. Be gone, Nave is actually not terrible. For monster inflicts battle damage. Return that monster. That's non-targeting and everything, but it, this card is a little underwhelming in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. But it, it used to be really cool because you return the monster. The other thing is, if we attack, our monsters get returned. Also, they could just pop the card before they enter the battle phase. That's another problem with it. That guy looks weird, but we already have him. Spring of Rebirth. Increase your life is for 500 every time a monster is returned from the field to the owner's hand. Actually, funny enough, that works with the card we just pulled. The Be Gone Knave. So it's already like double synergy right there. There's a lot of cards in, in, in this set that are decent. Squire. Uh, I, I can't use Shaman. I don't have the materials for it. And I, I wouldn't even want to make it even if I did have the materials for it. Uh, we've got Shine Knight. Order by the Emperor is not the worst card in the world. But we've already got it, so it's just more copies now. Soul Taker is a decent removal card. This is another one of those cards you wish you pulled it earlier in the run, but we're so far in, we have so much better removal, it'd be idiotic. We have Lightning Storm and we don't play it, so if, we, if I have Lightning Storm I'm not playing, I'm definitely not playing that. Okay, so this card is actually not terrible with the Barrier Statue, actually. I've never read this card. I've seen it before. I've never read it. It's Buster Blader holding his own sword and then that sword that gives warriors i think 500 attack which is really random uh, but basically if they attack us with the barrier statue and if they attack uh, actually never mind this card's terrible yeah i just read it fully and i'm like okay this card sucks you could target one attack position monster you control your opponent draws one card okay that's already terrible that monster gains 1,000, and it can make two attacks during the battle phase. If it attacks or is attacked, your opponent takes no battle damage. So I guess it can beef up our barrier statue, or it can help us attack over things, but your opponent draws a card, which this card effect's not good enough for that. Uh, Flame Eater. Okay, so we would need one of the other cards to make this usable. This isn't really usable for us right now. Uh... Perform Pal, we need the Perform Pal, not Damage Juggler, the other one, I forget his name, the one that, when it's infl when damage is inflicted, uh, he gets to summon himself, for some reason I'm Trick Clown, we need Trick Clown, Metal Dragon is not very good, Marshmallow on Glasses is, needs Marshmallow on, even if we have it, we wouldn't play it, yeah, while Marshmallow is in your monster zone, your opponent cannot target monsters other than Marshmallow on, I mean, I would need Marshmallow on to even use this, Metal Dragon, Steel Ogre, Grot, I, I can't. Unless I have Ready Fusion, I'm never going to be able to run that. Okay, so our hand is not so great, I'll be honest. Uh, but I think we can still do something with it. We didn't draw any Spellcasters, unfortunately. We drew Zorora. So we'll, we'll try what we can with it. We'll activate Zorora. We'll see if he's got anything. He might have an Imperm. Nope, he doesn't. So we'll equip this. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Spellcaster. If I did, that would have been really cool. But I do not. We'll activate this to search. Our opponent may or may not have an Ash. They may have an Imperm. I don't know what they have. We'll add Endymion. Like I said, our hand is a little underwhelming for sure. But it's not the end of the world. We definitely have some interruptions. We have Fiendish Chain. We have Destruction Durama Cannon. So we have a handful of interruptions. And if our monster survives, we can activate Artemis to search next turn. So it's, it's not the worst in the world. There's definitely worse hands that we could have had. He's going to summon the Lokai. Honestly, crazy enough, I actually think we just activate Fiendish... I mean, we activate the Destruction Derma. But at the same time, he's going to summon a bunch of Link Monsters. So I can just wait for him to do that. Uh, it wouldn't be a dumb idea just to book this and then just attack over it. But like I said, I don't think there's... I don't think that I really should do that because if he's going to be summoning a bunch of Link Monsters, just wait for him to summon all of them and then book everything. Now, he will be able to fill his graveyard with plants, so maybe I am making the wrong decision, but I guess we'll see. Um, he's going to activate this and add a Sunvine Spell Trap card. Again, this is another card that I can easily negate because then he doesn't get the sewing. I think it actually is worth activating Fiendish Chain on this because then we leave, we leave the... Destruction Durham as a backup plan. That way, if he if he happens to have sewing in hand for some reason, or he happens to have something of that sort in hand, then we can still kind of, if he can combo past this, then we have the Durham doll as uh, the Durham cannon as an ultimate punish. But right now, we just kind of 
t- just kind of put a pause on what he's doing because there's always a shot that he just can't play past this and then just end phases here but if he doesn't that's fine too see this is what i'm talking about because he there's always the chance that he could do something like this uh there's no point for me to book anything yet he so this deck is another deck i wouldn't say it's like impossible to play through but it's not easy i'll i'll, I'll definitely say that it is not easy to play against rika's because rika's have this field spell and it's basically like the layer of darkness field spell where it just tributes our monsters for their cost and that can be tough to play through especially if they have access to everything they they need yeah you can they can set a spell trap card directly and that would is usually the rika fl flurries oh if you control a rika monster i could have booked this to prevent this from happening they're going to tribute a plant add a rika monster from your deck to your hand uh, so they can add the little, little level one girl that adds cards. They can add that one. Yeah, this is definitely not an easy deck to play against for us. It's not a deck that's particularly easy to play against for most people. It's going to add two. Yep, Princess. Princess is a really good card. It's going to negate a monster effect. Monster you control is tributed. Special summon, I guess. As long as it's tributed in the previous chain... He's going to be able to summon that. That's fine. And he's going to summon this. Okay. That's fine. See, I think actually, funny enough, I think right here is where we book him. Because then he won't be able to exceed summon. So we just book these monsters. I think he wasted all of his summons. He wasted his normal. He got his specials off. These get booked. We lose that. That's fine. Uh, but now these are booked and we can just attack over them. And then we can do stuff the following turn. Maybe go into a monster negate. Do whatever we have to do. Because you wasted his normal summon. I think that was probably the right play to make in this situation. The next turn we flip Zorora. Yeah, he's already setting. Hopefully that's not the trap card. Because if it is... The trap card is pretty good. It steals a monster. But it, these, some of these cards require you to have a face-up Rika on the field. We shall see. They're going to activate a Ragnarika card. Had a Ragnarika card. This guy's got mad engine, man. He drew three engines. He drew the the Loki engine, and then he drew the the other engine, the not the yeah the Loki engine. Then he drew the Ragnarika engine, and now and then he drew also the Rika engine. He drew all three engines. Kind of crazy. He drew the Mudan. Like and what's crazy? He didn't draw the bricks from the engines. He drew the starters from the engine, which is awesome. Snow, okay. Snow is cool. You do have snow there. So we'll flip some in this. Uh, he has a response to this. I mean, he can respond. It's up to him. What's making me lose attack? This card's making me lose attack. The bloom. And then, why not? We will activate this. To special summon something. I think we just special summon out snow. We'll equip this not that it matters but we'll equip this we'll activate the effect we'll special summon out snow if we can if we can't we have endymion so we'll summon snow out right here and we definitely have play Ugh, maxi i was gonna i was gonna summon a ton too that's what actually sucks because i actually was gonna summon a lot um yeah, I was gonna I was gonna keep summoning. I was gonna go into the photon guy, but now I can't afford to summon, obviously. Let me see the graveyard of his monsters. Or not the graveyard, the the defense of his monsters. He has this is 18, it's right here. And this one is zero and it's right here. So I have to attack over those two. That is actually really, really annoying. Uh, like I said, I was going to attack I was gonna do a lot more stuff, but I, I can't afford to now. I cannot he, he's playing essentially a meta deck. I cannot afford to attack over his stuff. I can't I, yeah, I can't afford to I can't afford to do that kind of uh, I can't afford to give him that much advantage. His deck is way, 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 way too good. He's playing a plant pile deck. One recursion card and we're cooked. It's blessed wins. Send a plant, gain five hundred, target a plant, shuffle to gain five hundred, pay a thousand special summon an aroma monster from your graveyard. Uh, so he's going to shuffle back, and then he's going to... Alright, fair enough. Uh, and then we'll attack over these two. We'll attack over these two. I, again, I can't... I, I would love to keep summoning, but I literally cannot. So my best bet here is to activate Endymion. 
Activate Endymion. I didn't mean to equip, but I guess we're equipping. I did not mean to do that effect. I meant to do the other effect. So we'll activate this. And we'll pop right here. Draw another Moon Mirror Shield, which I did not want to draw. So I guess we'll put that back. I think, actually, we have to go into some kind of negate here. It'd be dumb not to. So we can go into the Berserker. We can go into Risen. I just realized, too, Annie has the negate in Graveyard. He has this thing. When your opponent activates a monster effect and you control a Rika, you can shuffle this card. Uh, tribute a plant, negate that effect. So I have to be very careful about the card that I actually summon here. Because if I summon... Photon, he can actually negate it. If I summon Risen, he can negate it. If you control a Rika, set one Rika from your deck. So I I actually, believe it or not, I think I just end phase. I can't even risk the random singular. I can't even risk a singular draw. Because if he draws into the Rika engine, we actually just lose. Because even if I do summon a monster that negates right now, which would be... Yeah, if I summon a monster that negates, he draws a card. He drew a Ragnarika card. He searched last turn. Yeah, I, I, I can't afford to give him any more advantage. Because if he gets to Arika, we literally just lose. And even if I do summon the Photon dude. Unfortunately, he has the Princess to negate the Photon guy anyway. And because he has the Field Spell, he can tribute my Photon guy on top of that. So, that is just a, a terrible, terrible situation for us. Like, no matter what, we're just kind of, uh, we're, we're just kind of cooked. If I summon more, there's a higher chance that I lose. And if I don't summon, well, then I, I just keep more presence on the board. So he has more monsters to kind of attack over. Uh, the only thing that I kind of regret is that by not going into the extra deck, I don't put more into more monsters into the graveyard. I don't fill up the graveyard with more monsters for Fairy Tale Snow because that could actually come up later on. So now he's going to go the Ragnarika combo route. So he got he did the we stopped the Rika engine, we stopped the Loki engine or the Sun, Sun Avalon engine, but now he's on the Ragnarika engine, which is his third engine. It's kind of impressive. Like I said, this guy only drew the starters from all these engines. He didn't draw any of the bricks. He just drew only the starters. And now he's gonna gain five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Man, he's gonna kinda just link climb from here on. Jasmine. I'm guessing he can. He hasn't even link summoned with this. He can easily link summon because he put the monster back. So he can link summon, search for sowing, and then tribute, and then special summon a plant from the deck in defense. So he could easily do all of that. And I forgot he actually drew into the aromatherapy deck too. The aroma deck. This is another deck that I've always kind of wanted to play. The aroma deck. Not really the plant pile. The plant pile is very good. Because it's, it's just like any other pile deck. Just like Dinosaur Pile and anything else. They're just very, very good. But the Plant Pile deck I actually like quite a bit. Now he didn't search off the Sun Avalon Dryass. Which tells me that he probably has the Sun Avalon the Sewing in hand. Then he's going to get Lone Fire Blossom. He's going to summon another Loki. Which is okay. Fair enough. And like I said, I think he has Sewing in hand because he didn't search it. He's going to go into a dry ass. Maybe he's going to activate it now. Oh, into the monster zone. Okay, 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 that makes sense. Link summon an extra monster zone using Loki. Okay, that's why he didn't. And now he's going to search the sewing. That makes sense. Because, yeah, because before it was in the main monster zone. And uh, now he's going to be able to sun, summon the Sun Avalon seed. Or twin. But that makes sense, actually, why he didn't do that. And he's going to special summon another San Avalon from the graveyard. Yeah, this is this is not looking good. Really, to be honest with you, that Max C is actually what will cook this here. Because had that Max C not been here, I would have ended probably... I probably would have ended on number 90 Galaxy and I would have ended on Risen or... Draco Berserker plus Galaxy Eyes. That's what I probably would have ended on, but I couldn't allow him to draw because if I allow him to draw, he gets into more Rikas, and the Rikas absolutely demolish us because they tribute four cost and they contribute our monsters, which obviously could be a real issue. Yeah, now he's going to go into more Sun Avalon stuff. 
Well, since our opponent is comboing off and I have absolutely no response to anything, this is the part of the episode where you guys can ask me questions about virtually anything. It started off with Yu-Gi-Oh, but I think we're out of Yu-Gi-Oh questions. Um, you can ask me about anything, and I will answer those questions. I don't think we're going to win this, but I mean, it's it's we'll watch it in the background. Uh, today's question is, uh, have I tried other TCGs? And then, in general, what's my favorite video game of all time or favorite game of all time? So, in terms of the TCGs, uh, I have tried other TCGs. I tried One Piece. I've tried Pokemon in the past. I tried Union Arena. I think I tried that one. I, if I'm, yeah, yeah, the new one that is has just come out. Union Arena, One Piece. I've tried those two. Definitely Pokemon. I have tried other other things, and I'll be honest with you, although I have tried those, I honestly actually do like Yu-Gi-Oh! better. Uh, those games have a lot of advantages. They have better prize support. They have, honestly, in a lot of ways, I wouldn't say cooler artworks, but they have artworks that... I think they're just more creative with the overall artworks that they do. Like, they'll release, like, three different rarities of a card. Like, there's so many advantages to that. In general, and I like that about other card games, but I will say I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is much more fun to play. Although those card games obviously have their advantage. One thing I, I, I don't like about those card games is generally... Like when I played One Piece, I just thought it was very easy. Like it was outrageously, outrageously easy. I thought One Piece was really easy. I thought uh, Pokemon is like out... like stupidly easy it's like it I, and it, to a certain degree it's made for kids so i get it but they are just feel very easy for me and Yu-Gi-Oh. the difference with Yu-Gi-Oh is Yu-Gi-Oh is really really difficult but those card games are like really almost too easy there's got to be some kind of a middle ground in the middle where uh where i guess you you know a game is not too easy but at the same time it, it, it's like complicated enough to, to have fun like Yu-Gi-Oh can honestly be a little too complicated like our opponent has been comboing off for like I don't even know how much time it's been like eight minutes beyond that he just keeps going and going and I have no way to really impede him because he maxied me and I couldn't make any interruptions so it's you know this is kind of the outrageous part of Yu-Gi-Oh and then other card games other card games have their own problems but this is more of the outrageous aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh he's going to set up quite a board here he's gonna go to battle phase i don't know why he went to battle phase and then he decided to start doing all this stuff all over again that was a little bit weird but he's gonna summon the rika petal he's gonna summon the rika snowdrop that was weird i don't know why he entered battle phase and then that was just he could have summoned the girl beforehand i don't know why and he's gonna end phase that was just yeah that was weird yeah i have played other card games like i said but for the most part Yu-Gi-Oh is really what I stick to. I'm going to summon Endymion here. Now, a major issue that we've got is we have no more things to equip with Endymion because I accidentally clicked that button and equipped a monster unnecessarily. I'm going to summon this, target effect monster, take damage equal to its attack, return to the hand, so he's going to be able to return the monster. I guess we just flip this and we activate Moon Mirror Shield. This is all we've got. And I guess we just go to battle phase with what we've got. This is the only thing that we have right now. He's going to activate the Rika Sheet. This is what I'm talking about. This is the one that steals a monster. Tributes a plant. So he's going to be able to steal our snow. Is this until the end phase? Or is this forever? Until the end phase. So he's going to take the monster. Now the positive thing is the Moon Mirror still, still stays on it. So we could just set this stuff. And we will be getting the monster back at the end phase, wherever we want. But, again, he can do kind of whatever. It, it, he actually kind of performed an underwhelming amount of things. All, when you really consider how many resources he went through, he actually didn't actually accomplish that much. He summoned this guy, which he's okay. And he summoned the Snowdrop, but not the girl, the, the, the big girl. Um, and he just set one monster, one card that steals. Like, he just actually did not accomplish that much. He's going to special summon a Ragnarika card. Not much I can do about that. That is a part of, you know, this card's like every turn is kind of outrageous. He's going to target this to book it, to send it back to the hand. I can't allow him to do that. I'm going to activate the Lost Wind to negate his monster, cut his attack in half. And then if he summons from the extra deck again, I get to reset Lost Wind, which is nice. Another side note, we still haven't drawn Mistake. Like, I swear to you, it is in here. 
We have not seen a mistake. A mistake would have stopped him in his tracks this duel. Because he had a pretty underwhelming start. We have never seen this card. I, I think that is... Of all of the crazy things that has happened to us, to never open a card that we've had in the last 25 duels, I think that's that's up there. That is a pretty crazy thing to not happen. Like, we've opened every other card. To not open a card that we have in our deck is, is pretty insane. Like, I, it's it's like, a, it, I would think that I forgot it. That's how that's how terrible it is. Uh, he's going to search the Aromage Jasmine. Again, all he has to do is summon any kind of removal, and we are cooked here because he just has to remove the moon mirror shield or the snow it doesn't matter our graveyard like i said is pretty filled up and then we have loose cards like fiendish chain here i wouldn't say that we did anything wrong in this duel it was really like i said maxi was really the card that put him over the top and what's crazy is in his deck maxi's kind of like a combo starter too because it's an insect so with the ragnarika cards you could even kind of get away with doing various stuff with it it's actually not bad uh we're gonna add back the lost wind here once he ch declares all of his chains so we'll activate this to get lost wind back onto the field and we'll get that back for free lost wind like i said it's one of the better cards that we've pulled it's one of the better low rarity cards in this entire game uh because i mean it's just great for things like he's going to enter the battle phase not even read my moon mirror shield that was like he was like yeah moon mirror shield Moon Smear Shield. He's going to attack again. Is this guy like some kind of a high IQ bot? What's going on here? Oh, he's going to try to protect. And he scoops. That's unreal. That's unreal. I would have thought I would never have won that. Time limit win. Well, well, well. I mean, that's that's our first time limit win in a long, long time. That's incredible. I, that's not a game I should have won. I, I can wholeheartedly say that I should not have won that game. We've got Muse and two... Legacy tickets, cool. Okay, this is what our opponent was playing. They are playing a huge pile deck of a bunch of different plants. Not really insects, but plants. And um, they're playing the Ragnarika, and they're playing the Rika, and they're playing Cactus Bouncer, and they're playing a bunch of different plants all mixed into one, and Sun Avalon, and Rikas, and everything. And it's just a really, really fun deck. I'm probably going to build this on my main account. I pulled a bunch of the aromatherapy cards although a lot of the aroma cards i kind of wanted to play that deck pure i've never tried playing aroma pure because it seems like a fun deck to just play on its own but it seems like it's underwhelming competitively on its own but i actually do think that this deck would be kind of cool to play by itself without all the other stuff just just have like a lot of the rika cards like blessed wind and dry winds and like you gain life points you pop a car like have various effects like that i always thought that was kind of cool so i might give it a try uh, pure in my main deck on my main account all right i'm totally shocked that we won that but we are opening some more packs we're going to open another master pack here hopefully we pull something excellent and then also we got some legacy packs to open we're going to go a faustian bargain that is good for non-effect monsters so that could be good in the phantasm spiral deck or the yeah that deck in general ruffian rail car we've already got that that is a phenomenal card is that level four too that is a great pull we obviously we don't have the silhouette rabbit that came out in the tcg and the ocg that sets this automatically this is a phenomenal card so for those of you that don't know it you could pause and read it but basically this special summons itself as a monster 1800 attack 1800 defense it's still a trap card so it's kind of like an eldritch um we do have synergy because this is a level four number one number two it's also great with time thief because it gives you a guaranteed um, monster it gives you a guaranteed trap underneath your time thief which is also good and then it has a co effect where when your opponent act when your opponent would summon a monster uh, with this card in your monster zone you can send to the graveyard one continuous trap one continuous monster one continuous trap in your monster zone that was special summoned from the spawn trap card zone to negate that effect so that's pretty decent it's, it's basically a very very good card for for a trap monster deck uh, we don't have any other cards, so essentially you'd be tributing itself. But basically, you summon this in your main monster zone. And it's basically like Thunder King Ryo. It, it, it stops an inherent summon, so you have to be very, very careful. It won't stop something coming off of Brand Diffusion. It won't stop something coming off of a Polymerization. It won't stop summoning. Basically, if a card summons it, it won't stop it. But if they go into a Synchro Monster, I can tribute this and or send this to the graveyard and then... Uh, 
basically negate that summon. So that's pretty useful. And then when this card destroys, when this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle, the destroyed monster, destroy the monster that destroyed it. So all three effects on this card are phenomenal. It's summoning itself as a monster. That's 1800 attack. Um, the whole continuous trap thing is great. Uh, monster zone destruction destroys the other card in a slowed down game state really really good in our deck like ours i i think this is definitely worth playing very good card personal spoofing altergeist maybe if i pull enough altergeist cards it, this is the best altergeist card it doesn't even say altergeist in the name uh we've got stardust xiaolong i can't really use this. i don't even have stardust uh royal firestorm guards if i was playing maybe maybe if i i mean i guess we have pyro monsters so we could shuffle back barrier statues and draw <laughs> maybe and for that yeah, you know, we have a pretty decent you know it's it's crazy we, we might actually end up playing i mean the thing is i don't have volcanics that's the only way to really fill up your graveyard with enough cards to make this usable but it's not a terrible card uh ninjutsu art of the notebook i don't think i can use this send a ninja set one ninjutsu yeah i can't really do anything with this and ai the ai a, a idol reborn which again i don't have enough ignisters uh, this is a cool card though azure and this is a cool card so two really good pulls out of this pack uh, but let's see what we get out of this next pack that one's a really good one uh like i said that card i would probably if i was gonna replace anything it would be mistake but i haven't drawn it so i can't even like determine where if it's a bad card or not Ad Emancipator, Field Spell during your main phase. Take five Ad Emancipator cards in your deck. Place them on the top. Yeah, this card's not good for us. We don't have... We literally don't own five Ad Emancipator cards. We have one of the worst Dark Worlds out there. Can't use it. Uh, Sage of Wisdom. I don't think we can... Always treat a, discard a spell. Special summon this card. It's a level five. Terrible stats. There's another one that is actually decent stats if you discard it, which is this one. You can discard this. Special summon at 2400 attack. It's actually not terrible. But discarding this is like... Discarding a spell for this bomb is just not worth it. Vylon can't use that. Stronghold is another level 4 2000 attack monster, which I guess kind of works with the card we just pulled. The Angel Statue. Wow, Seeker. Uh, is that our second or third copy? I don't know, but it's a free tuner. Um, it's not a free summon, actually. The other one's a free summon, uh, which we have cut, but we might have it. This is this is Seeker, so we have two copies of this. I think we have two Analyzers, so we pulled two Ad Emancipator cards out of one pack. This is the one we actually want, which is Researcher. But this one is a, if you control a rock, it's a free special summon. Seeker is if you control an Ad Emancipator, it's a free summon. This is just a free summon if your opponent controls a monster. If only your opponent controls a monster. So they're all free special summons in certain regards. But it, it's cool to have another copy of this. They're all tuners, so that's very useful for going into various things. Mermel, Abyssalong, I can't do anything with that and i mean i guess we're building that level f that water deck so your opponent cannot target face up water monsters for attack except this one my boy you're 1800 defense 1200 attack who needs to battle with you and then this last card Dra dragon made tiding which is probably our fifth or sixth copy of this card it's crazy how many copies of that we pulled uh but this second pack was honestly i'm, I'm kind of happy to see seeker it's a cool card and then Again, we st even though I just said we don't have enough cards to actually resolve this effect, I still think we don't, but it's not it's not bad. 500 to all rocks, uh, you can stack your deck. I, I don't think that's too bad. All right, let's open up these legacy tickets. Hopefully we get something out of here. Because uh, legacy tickets are hit or miss. Sometimes we'll pull legacy tickets and we'll like get these like shockingly good cards, and other times we get nothing. Destiny Mirage, I mean, yeah, it's a Destiny card. Can't do much with that. Dion, Kate, uh, Curse, if I had more... If I had more, not Rika, what is it called? Aroma cards. Maybe I could end up using that card for something. Uh, we'll see here. There was a lot of things glowing to hopefully get something good. If this defense position card battles in a monster. So this isn't bad. If our opponent attacks it, basically it puts that monster on top. That's not terrible. Insect Soldier of the Sky. Attack increases by 1,000 whenever it attacks a wind monster. That is incredibly specific. Most of the time, you're not attacking a wind monster. That's not very good. All right, guys. So in terms of the decks here, we're probably going to be, as you can see, I'm 25 out of 25. Every every slot is used up, so I can't use any more. I'm probably going to have to delete some decks and then start remaking the decks because a lot of these are repeat decks that we've had. Uh, so this is the Chaos deck. I actually remade it. I think it's a lot better. I've been playing it in the solo mode, which means absolutely nothing is in the solo mode. You always do well in the solo mode, but I remade the deck. It's got, you know, a Cosmo engine, Psy Reflector engine. I haven't optimized the 
synchro monsters that we can use but i've been trying them and against the solo mode it's been doing really well but that means virtually nothing but i've remade the chaos deck i think it's pretty cool i'm also going to be deleting like i said most of these decks because a lot of them are repeats and uh, yeah a lot of them are just like decks this is like our first deck here which once we actually started making somewhat of a deck this is our first deck uh, but we've got the Trickstar Engine, Dragon Warrior, a lot of these older decks I have to delete because I have to make space for new stuff. And then I'm going to be remaking some of the decks like Legendary Ocean. Again, I don't even know what direction to go with this, whether it's going to be Normal Monster, whether it's going to be Water Spam, I'll have to see. But I think, or it's going to have like Dinosaur Normal, Dinosaur Normal Pacifist could be a deck, but I guess we'll have to see. But we are going to be, I am going to be deleting a good fair bit of these decks to make the space uh pendulum i have to i have to remake the pendulum deck and just throw all of our good pendulums into a pile because i remember i did use this to for a little while in order to uh, just do the daily not the dailies the 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 there's certain goals that we had to accomplish so I, I i did those but the decks right now we're on a little bit of a winning streak so we'll see what we do because if we're winning there's really no point to change decks uh, but well, we'll definitely work on some stuff. La, 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 la.